This is the new BMW M3 Touring and it's a little bit like Chat GPT because it's something we dreamt would be possible for ages and now it is. And it could well have all the answers. You know, supercar performance, sports car handling, estate practicality. It's madness to think that BMW has waited to now to build an estate version of the M3. They did actually do one with the E46, but never actually made it public. And I've driven an F81, which was converted to M specification in a drag race, but that was done as a one-off by the owner. This is the real deal. And we're gonna find out just how good it is in this video. I'm gonna talk you around the exterior, the interior. We're gonna take it for a drive. And of course, I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, car wow. The M3 Touring uses the same engine as the M3 Saloon, so it's a three litre twin turbo straight six, puts out 510 horsepower and 650 newton meters of torque. The Touring, is only available in X-Drive, so it's four-wheel drive. There's no rear-wheel drive version, and it has an eight-speed automatic gearbox. BMW says this car should do 0-60 in 3.6 seconds, but I'm gonna find out for myself using my specialist timing gear down here, and I'm gonna time it over the quarter mile as well. Let's launch it. Oh, scrambling at the tarmac, but I bet it beat that time. 3.37, you bet it did. Wow, this is so quick. What's the quarter mile though? 11.5, did 100 miles an hour in eight seconds. Bonkers! To ensure the M3 Touring can stop as well as it goes, important with the car like this that you might fill up with like wardrobes and things, it's fitted with some pretty beefy brakes. You get 380 millimeter discs up front gripped by six piston calipers and 370 millimeter discs at the rear gripped by a single piston caliper. If you want to be doing lots of regular hard stops such as on track, you're going to need the carbon ceramics. They're an 8,000 pound option, but you do get slightly bigger discs, 400 millimeters at the front and 380 at the rear. Still the same number of pistons in the calipers though. Now the car comes as standard with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres, which are my tyre of choice. Now shall we see how the tyres and the brakes work in combination to slow this car to a stop? Time for a brake test. All right, I'm going to do a brake test from 60 miles an hour. See how quickly it can stop. <laughs> my God, that dug in, that did. Whoa, 180 feet. I need that in metres. There we go. 28 metres. 28 meters, 28 meters. That's insane. That's insane stopping considering this thing is quite heavy. Wow. BMW has really worked on the three series touring chassis for this M version. So it's wider, it's lower, it's ever so slightly longer. You've got uprated springs, you've got new dampers, which are adaptive as standard. They've also put extra bracing on the front subframes in the engine bay and extra bracing at the rear as well over the M3 saloon because of the extra weight here at the rear. Also, the car has a four wheel drive system which is more rear drive bias than a standard X-Drive model. And you've also got a limited slip differential on the rear axle. The final thing they've done is tweak the car's steering to make it more responsive. But what does all that translate to on the road? This is the ultimate one car garage right here. We have got what feels like a sports car yeah, enough room behind me to carry a load of furniture. <laughs> the car everybody has been waiting for. Well, every motoring journalist, he probably can't afford one. But, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, this is something else. The engine is nuts. And because you've got four wheel drive, it can deploy it. I had an M3 rear wheel drive and on this road here, these kind of conditions, it should be engaging traction control the whole time. This though, all the power is going to the road and propelling me forward it is bonkers, utterly bonkers. And what's really impressive is how well this car disguises its way through the corners. And the steering is on point, it is so accurate, it puts the car exactly where you want it. And oh, gear shifts, I've got it in maximum attack and they're quick, they are quick but they're not as snappy as you get from a dual clutch gearbox like in the old M3. But wow, this car, it is it is the oh, do it all car. Once you've dropped your family off or whatever it is at the tip, take the twisty road back home and have some fun. That's what this is about. <laughs> oh yeah. If someone said to me, one car, that's it. One car, you can only have one forever. 
good chance it would be this. You might be thinking though, what about an RS4? Well, this is a very similar thing to an RS4, but an RS4 cannot live with this on a twisty road. This is on another level in terms of driver involvement. Yes, the RS4 is less expensive. In fact, what you could do is get a nearly new RS6. It's the same money as this, but I've had an RS6 and it doesn't feel as fun to drive as this. In fact, the RS6 doesn't really poke you to like go quicker. It's more just a relaxing cruiser that has this performance that you forget about. But this, it, it goads you into going quickly. It's the kind of car that you take out specifically to go for a drive. And I wouldn't say that about the RS6. If you want to see my video on my old RS6 daily driver, click on the pop-out banner up there and follow the link in the description below. This is absolutely full on BMW M division doing their job as they should do. Why have we waited so long for an M3 touring, guys? Why? What? Why? Why? It's worth the wait, though. The M3 touring is not only awesome to drive, it's also awesome to look at, especially from this angle. Just looks so good, doesn't it? And look, quad tailpipes, which are real. Whoa. Yeah, the stick of truth, enjoyed that. Tell you what I also enjoyed, the M carbon pack. It's a £7,000 option, but you get carbony bits here and elsewhere in the car. More on that in a bit. Love that look. And I love the paint on this car. And BMW's celebratory M50 years logo as well. Plus, the M version gets this little roofy spoiler add-on over the standard touring. I could just look at that for ages. Anyway, let's continue around. So, another feature that is so cool the widened wheel arches and the way they blend into the bodywork. It's so nice. We've got 20 inch alloy wheels at the back, 19s at the front, these big protruding side skirts, and of course, fistable M mirrors. The only bit I don't really like is this fake vent on the side. Moving to the front, it's just the same as the M3 saloon. Do you know what? You've got to admit it, haven't you? We've got used to this grill. It actually looks good, doesn't it? On the M3, it really does. Obviously, compared to the standard 3 Series, you've got the big beaver teeth, the sculptured bonnet, the huge air vents, and once again, look, there's some more carbony bits. Oh, this car just looks awesome. Love it. Now, it is expensive, though. Starts from £85,000. Here on the inside, the M3 Touring is no different to the M3 Saloon, and both cars have been updated with the new huge curving infotainment system and digital driver's display which quite frankly is a little bit harder to use than the old system however it does have lots of m features on it like m dials m gauges and m nus speaking of m nus we've got an m sport steering wheel with the m pattern on it there it's also carbon fiber and you've got carbon fiber gear shift pedals plus the easy access m1 and m2 configurable buttons down here you've got carbon fiber on the center console and here on the dash as standard you also get an m gear selector with m on it and some ME buttons down there and a red starter button. You also have the M patterning here on the seat belts and you've got M on the sills. Mm. We've got M mats, M mats. No, just normal mats I'm afraid. You also get some M sport seats, but these are the rather lovely upgraded carbon fiber bucket seats, which come as part of that carbon pack, which includes the carbon on the exterior. And they are among the very best seats in any car in the history of the world. I absolutely love these seats. I'm not so sure about the interior color. I sort of like it. It goes well with the exterior, but I do feel a little bit like a gynecologist sat here. The sporty theme continues here in the back. So you've got two-toed seats. The pattern is on the rear seat belts as well. And there's another advantage to having these carbon fiber seats they're thinner, which means more knee room. And if you're in the back, you get to look at them and they look awesome. Plus, the advantage of the touring over the saloon, headroom is even better. It's very spacious. And then there's the other thing. It's way more practical. You see, like with every BMW 3 Series touring, you have the quick access to the boot there like that. Love that feature. And then if you want to put bigger items in, of course, you just open the tailgate normally and you've got a much wider opening than the saloon. The capacity isn't actually that much greater. It's 500 litres compared to 480 for the saloon, but the space is just so much more usable. And look, you've got to load the cover there. Can I 
with that bit there as well look that's for like dogs in it keep your dog in the back or if you're like really loading it full it stops things coming flying through into the cabin i'll just remove this come on remove it's not too hard it is two piece though all right and then that bit as well there we go and then if you need to carry really long items look you could not do this in the saloon I put the wrong thing there, look. I thought this was like um, seat releases. <laughs> it's actually the 12 volt socket and you got a hook there. The seat releases here, they're electric. I'm such an idiot. Look at that. A huge practical load area. It means that you can take this car on a track day, miles and miles away from home, then you don't have to drive back. You can just spend the night in it. It's brilliant. Ow. Actually, that brings us up to five or nine things about the BMW M3 Doring. An M3 is supposed to be sort of lightweight, right? Sporty. This thing weighs in at 1,865 kilos. It's only 50 kilograms lighter than an M5 with a V8 engine and a much bigger body. In fact, the M5 CS with its lightweight bits is lighter than this car by about 40 kilos. Fatty. The M3 Touring stop speed is electronically limited to 155 miles an hour, but you can actually increase it by paying BMW some extra money for the M Drivers Pro Pack or whatever it is, it's like £2,000, and then they'll increase the top speed to 174 miles an hour, which is actually six miles an hour less than the saloon. Oh dear. Also, while the saloon gets a carbon fibre roof as standard, this doesn't. It's just a normal metal roof. Can't get carbon fibre. You'd think that a car that starts from £85,000 would get adaptive cruise as standard. But oh no, BMW want to charge you extra for it. It's £1,700 as part of a technology pack. That's nuts. In fact, this car with options is £103,000. £103,000 for an M3. If you use this M3 Touring like you would an estate car, you'd be very careful if you've got these carbon seats because you might be tempted to just chuck stuff into the boot, you know, stuff that you take into the rubbish dump or maybe if you're carrying things like washing machines because you can damage the back of these seats. Look, this one already has a chip out of it. I've heard from BMW's press office that some motoring journalists have been filming these cars with random things in the back like wardrobes and stuff like that for the lols and obviously someone's done that. That wasn't me. It wasn't me. I don't ever damage cars. Not ever, 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 ever. I curb those 20 inch alloy wheels which come as standard. Ah, f it! That would really do my head in if it was mine. However, it's not all bad because these carbon fibre bucket seats have this special button where you press it and then the side bolsters Grip your body tightly. Can you hear it whirring? Mm, they give you a little cuddle to hold you in place when you're hooning about. And like with some of these car's competitors, there's no soft limiter, so you can rev the engine all the way up when you're stationary. Go on, do it! Lovely. You can configure this car exactly as you want it, so you can alter the engine between three different settings, Efficient, Sport and Sport Plus, the suspension between Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus, the steering between Comfort and Sport, the brakes between Comfort and Sport, and the four-wheel drive system between four-wheel drive, rear bias four-wheel drive, and actually two-wheel drive mode. You can even alter the level of traction control that you get. And once you've picked your favorite setup, so for me, it's Sport Plus for the engine, chassis in comfort, steering in sport, brakes in sport, four wheel drive system in normal, and traction all the way on. This is my road setting. You can then save it by pressing one of the end buttons on the steering wheel. And then you can have another configuration for the other one. That could be your track setting. So you could have it in four wheel drive sport and the traction control off. To be fair, when you're driving on the road in the UK, you're always going to want the suspension in comfort because in Sport or Sport Plus, it's just too far. They're perfect from the track though. It's also great that you get a rev counter in the heads up display, so there's no excuses for cocking a gear shift. Go and rev it up again. This car is something called a drift analyzer and because it's four wheel drive, yet you can switch it to two wheel drive, you should be able to do decent drift, so I'm going to get it to grade my drift. Let's have a go. It's got a light that, surely. I'll do, won't it? I forgot to press activate. I'm going to mark it myself. I'm going to give it a four or five stars. 
Seeing as this is supposed to be the ultimate all-round one-car garage performance car, it needs to be quite relaxing and easy to live with every day. So for just general driving around town, it's absolutely fine. So when you have the car in automatic mode, it does a good job of slushing the gears together, just relaxing and smooth, but then it is a torque converter auto. That's what they're designed to do primarily. If you want, you can jack the seat up quite high so you can get a good view out. Make sure you know exactly where the corners of the car are for squeezing through gaps in traffic because it's not the narrowest of cars. It's still a fair old size, this. That said though, the view out the back window is all right. The steering is light enough round town. And while the suspension is on the firm side in comfort mode, it is livable. And of course, you've got all the like surround view cameras if you want them to help you when maneuvering so that you don't ding it while parking because you don't want to dig it, especially not with this paint. It's probably be quite expensive to repair. Look at this. That's just fine, it's just normal. Just like a three series touring, because that's what it is. It's just a little bit more of a rumble from, well, I say the exhaust, it's probably coming through the speakers, and a little bit firmer, but nothing really to complain about. And while these seats are very sporty, they're also really comfy for long journeys. So there, it's win-win. Win, 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 win. There is one area where this car doesn't perform so well, and that's when you're cruising at speed on the motorway. There's a lot of tyre noise. Now, the saloon is bad enough, but it seems to be worse in this touring. Maybe it's the bigger body, it just echoes around it a bit more. It's more pronounced as a result. In this respect, an Audi RS4, and especially an RS6, is easier to live with as a daily performance car. Then there's the economy. So this thing is averaging 21 miles to the gallon, which isn't great. Though when you can see the performance, it's, it's sort of forgivable. However, if you are after a similar car to this, you want to stay in the BMW family, and you want to save yourself a bunch of cash, and you want a car that's, you know, it's 80% it's of what this car is, just get an M340i Touring. If you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there, follow the link in the description below. However, if you have the M340i Touring, you'll always be lusting after one of these, because when you're in the mood for fun, this is just that much better to drive. And I'm one of those people that's always in the mood for some fun. So then, what's my final verdict on the BMW M3 Touring? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the M3 Touring if you're after a car that has insane performance, is genuinely good fun to drive, and is practical enough to fit with your lifestyle. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know if you agree with my verdict in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos. And on that box there, to go to Car Wow to sell your car the easy way. Let dealers all across the country bid on your car to get a good price. Thanks for watching.